All right, at 7.30, I'll call the meeting to order. And resolve that the agenda for July 2nd, 2019, regular meeting of council be approved. Motion made by Councilor Morio, second by Councilor White. Further discussion? All in favor? Motion's carried. And resolve that the minutes from the June 18th, 2019 regular council meeting and the June 20th, 2019 special council meeting be received and approved. Motion made by Councillor Friesen, second by Council. Uh, well, I do want to make a correction or potential correction, I'm not sure. I just, on the June 18th minutes, I, I, it showed me it's absolutely just true, except I, I had sent communication that it was going to be and that it was available by telephone, so that's really my confidence. We can make that. You, you were absent. You, you don't need permission to. I'm, not, I'm, not asking, I'm just saying. It. Okay. I wasn't asking for permission to be absent. I was just reflecting that I, I had advised that I was going to be it was available if you needed me. But one week, I talked about all right, we'll make that sure. yep. change. Um, it, it was, motion was made by, sorry, I missed that. It was Councillor Friesen, second, second by Councillor Gray. Further discussion on Since that. I wasn't present at the one meeting. I have a perfect recollection. <laughs> <laughs> uh, further discussion, all in favor? And it's carried. We have no delegations or hearings this evening. Uh, no reception of petitions, communication 6.1. We have a letter from Dauphin Regional Health Center in regards to a tour of the facility. You'll see the attached information there for Thursday, July 18th, between one and three. Hopefully if you have clear schedules, you can make it down to Dauphin and, and have a tour. Um, beautiful. Councillor White. I'd like to tell them. Okay, go ahead. Uh, you're talking about permission from council? Yeah. Aren't you going to PMH, anyways? Yeah. I don't know that. Oh, you don't know that? Well, I haven't heard anything from them. Would council like to have a resolution for Councillor White to attend on our behalf? PMH doesn't. Well, uh, they, they have gave no indication that it's occurring. If they have, it's not necessary. But if yeah. they aren't, I still think about oh, I'll move that. I have a motion to have Councillor White attend the uh, DRHC tour Thursday, July 18th. Motion was made by Councillor Gray, a second on that motion. Councillor Friesen, any further discussion on that? Well, implied that or, uh, whether it needs to be stated that obviously it's something only to uh, clear on health not coming. Yeah. And that'll be. I don't know whether that needs to be in the motion or not. Subject to Prairie Mountain Health not sending me. not sending Councillor Late. Right. That should be bizarre since you're a board member. They start to start thinking before. Sorry. Any further discussion on that topic? All those in favor? Motion's carried. That was, that was a Dauphin? Yeah, the yeah. Dauphin Regional Health Center, yes. I'm oh, sorry, and who were the two motioners? Uh, Councillor Gray made the motion, Councillor Friesen seconded. Right. Thank you, sorry. No problem. I'm still, uh, I'm still getting used to this. I think I've got it. You and me both. <laughs> All right, moving on to 6.2, a letter of purchase for 1512 Third Street South. And we have an attached letter in that regard. Has everybody read that? It's an offer to purchase the said property, lot 11 plan, the 35550. The offer to purchase was of $200. Councillor Delorier. I would be in favor of selling this lot for $200, especially since she's indicated she's not going to do any type of development on it. She just wants it for green space. I mean, it's, it, I'd be willing to look at some sort of 
offer if it was some sort of actual development that's going to increase the assessment of the of it but to just have for green space for 200 bucks that's a heck of a deal if we go through with that well and besides we should give some guys a way to develop it like, like we're i don't i i think we should we do have i think a policy on sale of lots and it just seems to me we should just follow the policy and in fact, I'd like to have our committee, when, whenever we meet her, we meet her as long as we talk about that whole issue of, of, of that process, both, both sides of that, when, because lots are lots. I, I mean, we have a policy, and our policy is whatever the market value is, we sell them, and we shouldn't really need, as long as people are following the policy, it should be a report and not a motion from us. Same thing with the procurement thing. We've got a procurement coming up later. As long as the policy, our budget and policies are being followed, we, we need to review that procurement policy and get it into a bylaw form. So those are two things we need to talk about. So for me, I don't I agree with you, um, maybe for a different reason, but the, the process is we have a policy. So here's the amount that it costs for the lot. It, I mean, it doesn't hurt to like, write the letter, but I, I agree whatever the policy is, whatever the policy is, unless it comes with a recommendation for some good reason, I'm not in favor. Mr. Poole. Yeah, the, I guess the only, the only policy that I know of is that, uh, again, the southeast corner development is okay. is that we would sell it uh, if there was an intent to to develop at a reduced price. Other than that, it would be assessed value. Other, like that, I think that rule is covered the rest of town. It's, it's, it's basically yeah. the assessed value. Well, mm -hmm. I'm Just to let council know, that's what administration has been doing in the past. Councillor DeWine. I was just going to say, I don't know if there was a codified policy per se, but in the past it's always been, if, if there was no intention to develop, it was always assessed value, and then we had a special deal in the southeast right. corner on it, but there, there was things you had to do with a certain option. To $3,000. Uh, 1000 if there was no uh, natural gas, 2000 if there was natural okay. gas. Whatever, I remember yeah. that. Yeah. But you had to do things within a certain right. time frame where you lost it. So, and and our, I, whether it's a policy or a practice, I, I know that it's whatever it is. We should codify it anyway. Because well, the administration shouldn't have to wonder, is this acceptable or not? We should be saying, this is what we're doing. Councillor Friesen? Um, I'm just wondering if she's going to quit looking after it. Well. We should maybe get her to, whatever you do, counter offer. Tell her that she needs to pay the assessed value, and hopefully she will, and then look after. I have I have talked to Alyssa and told her exactly that. Uh, I estimated the assessed value. I meant to get that from Terry today, but uh, I did not do that. So she does know that uh, it, it's our normal practice to sell lots that are not up for development for the assessed value. Mr. Morio. Council um, Memorial. We've had prior practice in the past where we've had individual that has purchased a lot on a reduced rate with intended to build. Um, and then timeline has passed where the individual didn't build and was required to pay full assessment or a balance to the full assessment value um, with because he had no intention of building on there. So um, as Council Gloria and Ray say, it's uh, I agree with them, they have to pay the um, what our current practice is, is the assessment value. Um, is this individual, same thing, looked after a lot for years, but uh, kudos to them, like and it's really appreciated, but uh, $200 would be a gift. Well, you know, I, I, there may be another solution, which is, uh, since we have no particular purchase for it in mind, perhaps we can um, lease it to her sort of annually for the cost of, of taxes and she can have, I mean, she would have to pay the taxes anyway and she can have it or even just tell her we can give it to her annually for some nominal sum. I don't really care, but that way she takes care of it. She gets what she needs. She doesn't put a garden in and get sold in August or whatever. I don't know. Mr. Uh, that, that through the chair, this could uh, create an unintended consequence where they assume ownership, so when it someone does come in and have a trailer and they say, I would like to buy that lot to put the trailer on, and we have the lease, then uh, the, the, the lease or feels That's that it. they effectively 
own it. You know, at least the. Uh, yeah. I suppose I, I don't know. I don't think it's like talk to be. I mean, personally, I think you could do a pretty simple agreement that says you're getting it year to year. It has to be annually, renewed annually, and you have full access to it. And we'll make it. You know, we'll have the agreement every December first. So for the next year, so that because she's not, she really doesn't care if she has it in February. I'm guessing. Mm -hmm. I, I'm thinking she cares more about it from April till I don't know October. Yeah. Bill, that'd be right. Anyway, I, I, I understand what you're saying. If you create long term liabilities, you know, 30 years, you used to be a squatter's rights, unless you would be a squatter, you'd be under an agreement. But it, it may cause problems, that's true. You're right, it's possible. But I'd rather that than have a bunch of weeds in one of our lots. Mm -hmm. Is council's wish to create a, a resolution on this in that regard, or would we rather go back to the I'd say leave it to administration and they can sort it out. If they need our help, they'll ask us. Do you need our help? No. no. Not at this moment. No. So, <laughs> here you go. We don't need to step on landlines unless we need to. All right, moving on to. Exactly. That's what your job is. Moving on to 6.3 um, a letter um, in regards to Deputy. Fire Chief Medill's retirement. Both there's a letter from Mr. Fedorchuk as well as a letter from Mr. Medill. And that's just for our information. Um, at this point, on behalf of Council, I'd like to thank Mr. Medill for his continued efforts in, in his role and, and we wish him all the best in his retirement. Mr. Councilor Gray. Do, do we, do, do, uh, I've asked this before and I can't remember, but I, I think we don't have a personnel policy that talks about process for moving into positions and so on, right? We don't have that. We, we can, I think we, we, the point, reason, point I'm raising is, and I've raised it before, I think we need that so that again, this become, this is perfect. This is exactly what should happen is that there's a, a process and it's dealt with and it's just a letter that says this is the way it is, but it should be a process that we've approved. And I just don't, I, I assume that somebody's talked about it, but I think that's a process we should say, because in a lot of places, councilman, uh, councillor, keep calling it Constable Morio, Councillor Morio's workplace, for instance, um, every position is advertised or, or even if it's internally advertised so that even if there's a sort of a, 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 a an error apparent, there's a process for going through and so I think we should talk about what the process should be. I'm, I'm happy with this one because I don't want to interfere, but I, I just think we should have a process. And so that also, in addition to the other two things, if we can talk about that, the committee of the whole. That'll be the chair of that committee to, to remind the committee, committee oh. or, uh, either either personnel committee or the chair of, and or both chair of um, uh, protection services to bring that up at the community or committee as a whole, Councillor Delorier. Uh, I just wanted to comment on on Deputy Chief Medill. When I think back over the last ten years here, all the the jams he's gotten our sort of as a community, I think we owe a lot to uh, to uh, Mr. Medill. Whether it be flooding down at Duncan Crescent, whether it be the the water, water issues, you know, he he. He provided some strong leadership for the entire community, and and like it says there, we we're between fire chiefs. You know, he he's always been somebody we can rely on. So I think the community owes a, a great debt of gratitude to uh, to uh, Mr. Medill. So I hope he enjoys his retirement. Do we have yeah. Councillor White? I'm just uh, reiterating uh, Councillor your comments completely, uh, and I, I I'm, I'm sure the his worship would be considering a letter to. Uh, Chief Medill saying uh, appreciate the exemplary work that he's done, and perhaps in the same vein, a note to the three individuals that moved up the ladder. And thirdly, relative to Councilor Graves, I think that's a, certainly I would like to be part of it or, or the protective service team part of that process. But that's bigger than just this thing; it's, it's all jobs that's right. within the town. So the personnel committee or committee as a whole collaboratively work that. But uh, I think Coach Medill, it would only be for me, is uh, he's been a key guy. 
just Councilor Greg. Yeah, following up on, on that theme and I'm joining the core, so I'm sure six and it would be seven um, of saying the same thing, so I'm not going to reiterate it too much. But are, is there something we do for people who've served us for 40 years, like 40 years or uh, when they retire? Like it just seems to me that, that there are certain milestones or certain events where you say, gee, maybe we should do something more than a letter. I, I just absolutely. Normally, retirees they get uh, some sort of form of recognition at the uh, supper in December. But if you want to, but I mean, a real uh, uh, okay, uh, yeah. different. It, it, uh, okay, a letter and a round of applause is more, is not what I was thinking. I was thinking some like I, again. I'm not talking about every retiree. I'm not talking about everybody who spends ten years here. Uh, but if you've spent twenty five years or thirty years or forty years, at some point, surely we owe them something more than just thank you. I mean, some visible form of thank you. I'm with you. Councillor Morial. Um, yeah, I want to personally thank uh, Deputy Chief Medill for his 40 years of service. Uh, for it. He's been a great asset to the community um, and a great mentor and teacher to the fire department and to people in the emergency uh, management of the community when there was situations that arose that we had to be in the emergency status. Um, building on to uh, the rest of the council's comments, uh, we do offer the three year pins, but uh, I will put forward a motion that uh, that the town purchase a plaque um, to present to uh, Deputy Chief Fidel for his 40 years of service and our appreciation for that. So, Second that. Right. Councillor Friesen. Um, I was around when uh, David's dad was Lawrence. Lawrence, yeah. And he really is a chip off the old block. He's just like his dad. And we literally will miss him. I know Elaine is just retired, and so I'm not that surprised that he's retired too. But why couldn't we have something for him and Glenn together? He's 40 years, Glenn was 30, whatever, and I just think we could maybe do something special. Party. Late. Well, the two people that are chairing that committee are right there, so. Who are you that? You two. Yes. You guys volunteer to us. So I, this is my opinion. There was a, a resolution brought to the floor of a, of a plaque in regards for that, and it was seconded by Councillor Deloria, did we have a price tag that we need to put to that, or how does discussion still? Discussion, Councillor White. Uh, I love the plaque; it's a great idea, but uh, it's like a letter, <laughs> you know. I think because it's forty, I'm thinking of something significant, and I don't know what that is. A nice lawn chair or something for the beach, this cabin, <clears throat> whatever. But the yeah. plaques are nice. Can I just suggest something? Uh, I know in my own municipality in Ontario, at 25 years, uh, the mayor usually uh, presented, we worked with the 25 years, uh, um, gold watch. Sometimes it wasn't gold, but we, they set a limit of $300 for 25, 25 years of just go down to the jeweler and get their name put on a nice watch. Or whatever. That's, that might be a limit. Yeah. That's something I, 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 I'm fine with the plaque, although I, I tend to agree that it's, it's, it's something I've ever seen something more robust. But, but perhaps we can sort of generally discuss it. And, because again, I'm, much, I'm not so much for individual things as saying, at a certain number, I don't know what it is, 25 years, 30 years, some number, if you retire past that point, we're going to do something special for you. And I, I like the idea of saying, okay, we're going to spend $250 or $300. And leaving it then to the administration to help sort that out for us. So should we defer, it? defer it, or we can add to that motion of three hundred dollars and let administration. Let's sort it out and bring back. Something. Yeah. Uh, are you on point? Mover and second. Are good yeah. with that? Uh, could, sorry. Sorry. Could I have the mover and second? Uh, it was moved by Morio. Councillor Morio, second by Councillor Delorier. All those in favor? That doesn't mean you shouldn't do the letter. You still letter, have to do the letter. Letter is still on my list. Yes, so I will. I will do that up. <laughs> Mr. Kroll, we're good to move on there. Or you need a, a minute. Uh, what was the dollar value? 
three hundred dollars. And and we haven't figured out the recognition letter. Yeah, we haven't figured out the, 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 the policy on that. We've got the like to be the whole, but but there's going to be some uh, as we'll wait to a broader context here of people who've been here a long time. There's certain there's a there's some number I don't know what it is beyond which we have to do something to recognition. I think for for former mayor. Not as Tagati, Mackenzie. I think I think that's something that's inherent to council, and I think we should take care of that amongst the seven of us, personally. But and something more than again, I think last time we do we find some small thing at the thing. Yeah, and the block with this. Yeah. So, but I think maybe a, a party wouldn't be a bad idea for the councillors at home. We're just going to give Mr. Crow a couple minutes to get caught up before but we move on. From our funds, not from municipal funds. This could be a BOLB party, but I'll not party. Just, I, I'll, 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 yeah. just oh, I perceptually, think. because we're raising taxes significantly, yeah. I think we don't want to use it for that. I don't use it for that, and I want to. Um, I mean, it's different for some people. We're trying to create people to stay here for 40 years, and especially at the level David worked at. And the competency. Yeah, that's in there. I think this is a bunch of years, years, and 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 years, Punch uh, up. Do you see? I remember 6.4. 6.4. You refresh. Yep. Refresh. We do. How do you do that? Yeah. How do you hit refresh? Uh, you should have like a little arrow with a half circle. Like a circle or something. Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, okay. I never had to do that before. All right, um, that looks good to everybody. We'll move on to seven uh, reports of committees. Resolved that the super, sorry, don't we have to pass this motion on 6.4? Yeah, we do. Uh, we, vote, we, we have to vote on it, don't we? The motion to recognize? Well, because, uh, because we received oh, okay. $300. Yeah. Sorry, they resolved the motion to receive the communication communications for information. Moved by Councillor Deloria, second by Councillor Morio. Any further discussion? All in favor? It's carried. And this is your second motion? Is it just to receive for information? Yeah. No, 6.3.1 was carried. We voted on that one already. We voted, yeah. We did? Okay. We did. Okay. Um, 7.1 resolve the superintendent of works report be received motion be made by councillor white second by councillor friesen discussion councillor white just a uh, one thank you for the for the information there's two queries that popped up uh, i'm not sure where the letter went because there's a little ambiguity where letters are going lately but that'll work out uh, mr scales had a, a concern relative to the road out there and a little guy nearly getting hit and i forwarded that to who knows did you get a chance to, to reply to Mr. Scales? No, I don't know exactly what you're... Well, his boy was walking down the road and there's no sidewalk over there and he's concerned about, which is the next street down and over. Okay. And he was concerned about the traffic and the lack of the sidewalk, which is obviously the key part. And people are walking on the road because there's no sidewalk. I had mentioned that to Darren, not knowing that the next day Darren was going on holidays. Uh, I think I think it'd be appropriate if somebody from between the two of you gave uh, Robbie Scales a call and say, "Here's what we're doing. Thank you for the information." And that will be. And uh, the letter I forwarded to you relative to the cemetery, the individual had a concern that there was no water out there, and she couldn't water her plants, or she couldn't find the holes. Yeah, the guys are looking into it right now. Okay, so has anybody replied to that lady? Is it uh, Mrs. Goslin or Mr. Midwood or? Not neither, uh, Mrs. Yeah. Murder Scott. Scott. Yeah, so just give her a nudge and say thank you for the information. We're on it. Okay. 
Pardon? We'll let her know also. We'll let her know whatever's happening. Thank you so much. Anyone else? Councillor Delorier. Uh, well, control building inspection by uh, AE Engineering. Yeah. How uh, that's 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 passed. Or, or how is that whole project going? Are we going to get a update on that? Uh, uh, we can, yeah. Okay. Right now, like there's it's, it's, it's on track. I guess there's nothing we need to know about, or else we would know about it, right? Yeah, there's nothing imperative. If there is, there was a uh, approval of a shop drawing that was delayed by our consultant, which has caused the order to be delayed, which is causing the delay right now. So we're expecting our materials to be in three weeks. Councillor Gray. Rose to Council Delorier's issue. Um, I, I trust you've seen the letter to the editor in the Star Times. Yeah. Did you care to comment on that? Uh, I was. I, I did send a, an email to Council that I was pretty severely misquoted uh, on that. People are allowed to to send letters to the editor. I guess we we'll can talk to the Star Times about it, but maybe they can give us a heads up because it did involve our, our employees but uh, that's I guess that's what I can say I was severely misquoted. Okay well there were two issues one was the, the fact that it, she said it wasn't cut and I haven't been out for a while to see my, my grandmother in March, in March so I've been out since April. It's been, it's been cut since they got there or before they got there? Seven times. Okay so uh, they was they were they were I got a call back from another person who knew who was going in, and I don't know what to say. They were they were unhappy with the dandelions, not so much the grass cutting. Well, we're all unhappy with the freaking dandelions. Yeah, I guess. Are we? I don't, know, I guess, I don't we know, know how far I can go with that. As far as you need to. I guess we there, there's a report coming to council or committee of the whole in about two weeks. Okay. We're good. I've already discussed it with Darren again. I didn't realize it was going on holidays almost straight away. So it's and and the, the comments are like particular. Uh, the one I was I was particularly concerned with, of course. But the rest of it, I think, you know, I mean, uh, was that we didn't have employees to cut it. So I, that was like the, the one about if you want to cut it yourself. Uh, I I think we can assume unless you've changed character a lot that that was not an accurate statement. But. Um, was there anything to the we didn't have enough employees or we were behind? Uh, no, the the week that I talked to him was the week that this student started. And I started to cut, cut the first week. Uh, I won't remember until later, and then I'll raise it again uh, out of order. But the other one, uh, the second one, is um, we already knew there was going to be a problem with cardboard, right? And you've already identified that. Yeah. Are, are we going to? I think we need to talk about a policy, whether we need to do it in the whole or here. For me, it's simple. This is what you get. If you want more cardboard pickup, you have to contact OSS and pay for it. Isn't that what we agreed before? Am I missing? Am I forgetting? I think that's a fair statement. At the, at the time, it was exactly that, or or the business could take it to the landfill. They can do whatever they want. It's their cardboard. Do whatever they want. And, and is there anybody, is there any, I, I just, uh, is there any inclination to change that? Because from my perspective, there is not. We, we gave it due consideration. I may have made, we might have made, I might have, if I was the king, made different decisions than we made, but we made a decision. But at the end of the day, you, we get, with, with your taxes, you get this amount. If you want more, and I just want to be clear, so because administration presumably are going to respond to the businesses who want more cardboard pickup and say, look, you have choices. You, you're not getting with your taxes. You can pay us and we'll contact OSS, or you can contact OSS with OSS, which will presumably be cheaper, or you can take it yourself out to the dump, which presumably will be the cheapest. But it's not our, we're not owning that. We all agreed on that? I know. I just want, what I don't want is, is going forward on that and then the council changes that. Councillor DeLorean. So, so right now, what, what are you doing? Like, People that had to share dumpsters before, they they don't want to share now. Or? That is correct. Yeah, we didn't get complete information from the recycling provider in the past. We just didn't get complete information, so we didn't have a good idea of 
of how much commercial cardboard we were going to get from each each business, and uh, yeah, we're we're seeing that we're seeing that the information isn't matching to what the request that we're getting. Their pickup schedule is a lot less than our pickup schedule. People are requesting their own bins, and we're asking, well. What did you do prior? Well, we took it over in a big pile with our neighbors. Well, can we share a dumpster? Well, not anymore. We don't want that one no place to put it for uh, no other reason. But uh, uh, we are we are trying to accommodate reasonably. But uh, you know, if, if it's just cardboard and they're asking for extra bins, we want to be able to limit that because it, we can have businesses with six dumpsters, just cardboard. So there's there's businesses that go through a lot of boxes that just simply don't have the time to to cut up those boxes and make the space in the dumpsters. So it will either have to be that or take it to the landfill, call OSS, and they can they can provide all the counselors. Counselor Freeze first. That was pretty much my question. Is that like where I work? If I uh, cut up boxes and put them in there, big help that they brought us, that's no problem, right? Just yeah. Build up. Yeah. There you go. This new system will actually make it easy. Now we know what's up there for dumpsters. We will, we will be, because our old garbage recycling bylaw, when we charge per, we we're charging for garbage recycling based on garbage. Yeah. Now we will be able to break it out. And yeah. so if somebody wants six dumpsters, Starting next year, we'll, we can redo the, the garbage and recycling bylaw because it's due every we redo it every year. And if they want six dumpsters, they can pay for six dumpsters. So yes. as, right now, I forget what it is. It was uh, for a garbage dumpster, we we're paying about eight hundred dollars. You know, wh whatever it's going to work out to for a recycling dumpster, when we'll let them know that, and the market will let it sort itself out. So I, I, I mean, this is an issue right now, but I think yeah. it's an issue that is going to sort itself out once they see the price tag associated with having it, however many dumpsters they want to have for cardboard. Yeah, I, I agree. We should be, and even even if we get away from the special tax, we've been talking about that is is straight invoice they pay for. We just invoice them at the end of the year. Businesses. Council, no problem, Councillor Freeze. One more question. Someone asked me the other day if it was true that every time that truck picked up something, the town was charged for it. Yes, that's true. Every arm. Every time. Do they have a way of calculating that? Keep that's track right. as they go? Yeah, yeah. <coughs> Councillor Light, so if we refrain from putting our recycle bins out until they're full, as opposed to putting them out because they've got this much in the bottom, we will be saving the town money. That's correct. We were paid by the how many times yep. that item gets raised. Thank you. Thank we should, you. We should publicize that more. Yes, we should. We should. If people can, you know, we'll skip, skip go a month without, because we can. If yep. Mr. Kroll, if I want to discuss any of these, do I have to take myself off of out of chair? Or for this one, I can continue the conversation. No. The chair isn't supposed to discuss anything. Okay. Right. Just. Hey, no problem. Any further discussion, Councillor Morio? Um, regards to the uh, the resurfacing at the airport, uh, do we has all the um, users been contacted or given notification? Uh, you mean as in the PMH? Uh, PMH, any of the major contractors that come in that use. Um, yeah, we've re we have sent a letter to the PMH and the spraying companies. Uh, we've received a response from the PMH, just that they've received it. Okay. They will be contacting us. Okay. And then the, all the members from the, like, the local flying club and all that are made aware of that? Uh, uh, that one would be the one that I'm unsure of, but we can, we can easily do that through the commission. Councilor White. Uh, Councilor Delari had a good point, but we should do that. I think we sort of agreed, but as a bit of consequence of that statement, is somebody going to put a letter to the editor? I'm going to put something in the, the report that say, hey, by the way, every time you don't send it out, you save money. Is somebody going to do that? that I, yeah, we can, we can come up with a whatever, a paragraph or something, put it in the town page. And okay, thank you. 
I, I remember right away and I, I actually just from the airport resurfacing. Are, at the other, are the municipalities, the other municipalities, I know that there was some dispute about how much they're paying. I presume we'll come to that at some point. Um, either tonight or another day. But for the resurfacing, are they agreeing to pay their share? Uh, we don't know. So all we have is the asphalt companies doing our patches. We, the airport will be done last until we no. figure that out. We, we have a meeting pending okay. to try to get it sorted out. But it has to be done whether we, whether they are or not. And I don't see like, The way I understand it is whether there's the participating municipalities pay their share or not for the annual levy, the contract is with the airport commission to, under their budget, to resurface it. So, it's, okay. so even, so if they're, they have the ability that if their levies come up short this year to cover that cost in their budget, they have reserves or whatever. But okay. it's from the way I understand it, like we get it's the commission that's putting out the contract to do it, not the municipalities. Okay. Councilor White. Uh, relative to the comments regarding this resurfacing, uh, the letter, uh, I think we're the start of time to report it on the discussion relative to the airport and our concerns saying the airport commission decided the airport can't, commission can't decide that has to be. Uh, met by committee, all both both councils. Has the council so by the West made any attempt to contact uh, any of us relative to that? Okay, thank you, Mr. Kroll. We've uh, the chair was making an attempt to discuss with Swan Valley West, correct? The at the at the next airport commission uh, that was going to be discussed. I can um, say that the other two mis municipalities have agreed to their levies and their portions that that have been set forth um, in the event or in retrospect of Swan Valley West making the recommendation. I don't think that they're going to go against paying what they they agreed upon. But the rest will be discussed at the airport commission meeting. <coughs> Any further discussion? Yeah, I have two others. Councilor Gray? Have, have we ascertained, I, I keep getting asked this question, I, I don't know the answer, so the you the uh, building that was being used for the recycling, have we ascertained are you what the ongoing use for it? You mean the rent plan? Yeah. Uh, as of right now, we're, we're looking at uh, renting it to our uh, landfill contractor. Okay. Get Swan Valley West of the rented two plans. Okay. Um, just a, a matter of some public interest to uh, so I, I don't mean about renting it. I'll about <laughs> what happened? are we doing with it? How come we built this new building? We've got this waste gotcha. and, and whatever, and, and candidly, I'm more than willing to take heat for lots of things, but I, I have no idea. So, people. the other is the RFP for the pool. How close are we? July 15th is the deadline to get it sent out. Okay, we will hit it. We're good. That was, I know it's coming up under mine as well, but I figured it. Any further discussion on the Superintendent of Works report? All those in favor? It's Gary. Uh, moving on to Council and CAO reports. I will start with uh, Councillor Gray. Well, there's a, a Recreation Committee minutes. So that has everything I'm going to report on, so we're going to discuss that mostly. I'm incredibly happy to see the idea of going to maybe the whole, <laughs> whether we do it monthly or even more often. Uh, it, it is, um, there, there may be things that are appropriate to have ad hoc committees. Uh, I'm not saying there aren't, and I think there are from time to time, but um, I think councillors will feel left out if you don't have everybody at all of the discussions and that, that it's a much more effective way for us to make decisions. Um, the uh, if we also have uh, we had a meeting at settlement services uh, they've got a plan going forward they've got new monies coming in they're actually booming right now they they're really doing well um, what else have I done uh, uh, I don't know when, when I, I can't remember where our next rise meeting is I don't know, I'll probably be there but um, it's going to be an interesting situation because I think our two two of our municipalities aren't going to bend at all and i think we're going to be in a very difficult position so I, again i keep adding things maybe the whole from this meeting but um, that's another thing that we have to sort of 
talk about is uh, what we're going to do when the other, how, what our position will be when the other municipalities decide to stick by their guns and not pay more for economic development. Um, because it, it's a fundamental issue. We, if we either are going to um, go along with a meaningless plan or we're going to do our own or we're going to not do anything. But we need to talk about it as a council before and we need to have a robust discussion, not in a public forum. That's pretty much it other than the recreation committee events which are coming up. All right. And speak for themselves. Councillor Friesen. <clears throat> the uh, first thing I'd like to ask is uh, Communities That Care is having a strategic planning meeting person come up to Swan River and I know we've always talked about doing that so let's think about it. She's here on September the 20th. You know how they come and so if we'd like to do that, do you know who is who? her name? I don't know. Lorianne just uh, texted me and said that was the date they had given her. I certainly can find out who it is, and uh, then we can talk about that. You're talking about you know doing it for us as well. Yes. If they, if she comes up to do the community care, then she could stay and do one for us same time. Did, did we put that as part of our video work? Sir. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Um, I think you said part of my report tonight uh, <clears throat> is to ask to set the date to start the uh, vision, mission, and values meeting, hopefully three, four hours. Um, so I'll just leave that until I report. Councillor Friesen can take it, please. June 20th meeting financial planning for budget, uh, June 20th, uh, cemetery meeting with a couple of people and we discussed the, uh, uh, well, we discussed a lot of things. Uh, congratulations to the grads. Uh, safe grad was on the 21st. Um, this afternoon I attended Mr. Moosey's funeral and something that you probably don't often hear at a funeral is talking about economic development and the tourism in the valley because of the snowman and uh, I sat beside Jason Sokol and uh, he would be a perfect one to take as a push for economic development because uh, well he sells all that stuff um, and all the rural trails are in Swan Valley West or Manitonis Settlement Services had a uh, barbecue. You were you down there? I wasn't there. Oh. I wasn't here. And they were there all afternoon, and they just had a great time. They barbecued everything they could find, and they had little kids' games out there and a paddling pool, and they were just having a great time. Uh, thanks to all the uh, council people that showed up to uh, do ice cream. Oh, yes. Right here. And right here. Um, I wasn't. Did you catch that sarcasm? Um, I have contacted Kurz Bowser's. They're going to send me an invoice so we can get that bill paid. And I'm going to get an invoice from the Lions because we owe them 100 bucks for their train. Is there any place out of the shop that you can keep a train that size? Uh -huh. Year. I'm going to say nine months, but I know that's not what you meant. No. You know. It's probably 50 feet long. It says... Actually, I mean, was asking how long they want it. To oh, oh, they want, a, they want a place to store it through the winter. It says cement works. Does it, have to be, it doesn't have to be warm. Does it? No, they're cans. They're oil cans. Okay, we will give the old water treatment. If they need just space, a lock of the space. A place they can put it so they know they're going to be safe. Yeah. Is that, like, it's nothing downstairs, right? It's no, you have to be up, upstairs. Well, they're heavy, that's what I'm thinking. Yeah. So uh, I'll mention it to Calvin. Yeah, you can get a hold of me. Okay. Yeah. That'd be great. Thank you. He'll be happy. Anything? Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor White. 
Uh, first, I want to thank uh, Councillor Friesen for her work and her team for the Canada Day thing. It's a special day, and you guys did a great job, obviously. Uh, budget meetings, financial planning meetings are always interesting. We most of us attended those. Uh, the, the Cal Tire Foundation fundraiser, which is a bit unique in that all those monies went to the uh, primary care clinic. 620 hammers, 120 small peas, 300 pounds of potatoes. It was unbelievably successful. And from my perspective, more than the monies raised, which I don't know what they were, was having our community meet our local doctors in a different perspective, different plane. And for our doctors, I think all of one or two who were working were there. And uh, the support, they had like 35 volunteers. So it was a real, uh, Really positive thing for, for both the docs and the community to get to meet one another socially, which we have to do a better job at doing it in my mind. So I heard this great quote, so I, I think I'll just say it. I said I should uh, probably quit now because I've already told you more than I know. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Mario. Um, on June 20th, I was attended the budget hearing here in Council Chambers and uh, we passed our uh, upcoming budget. Uh, which was a difficult process this year. Um, 28th of June, I was attended the Provincial Municipal and Justice Advisory Committee meeting uh, in Winnipeg where we discussed a number of issues. Um, we had a presentation from Manitoba Infrastructure um, on weights and restrictions on how potentially municipalities have the ability to enforce weight restrictions on their roads. Um, that created a some debate, um, and there'll be some more work on that and forthcoming. Um, but one of the, the biggest issues that was put forward uh, for municipalities to be able to do that um, would be through the Community Safety Officer Program. So that launched a bigger discussion um, on the Community Safety Officer Program and how that could potentially look and how it could be moved forward and presented to municipalities to be able to fix a lot of their bylaw issues and enforcement and whatnot um, by having the ability um, to peace officer status and, and under the legislation to actually do, uh, or do those things. So, uh, so there'll be a lot more information coming uh, forward on that from uh, the committee and AMM on the Community Safety Officer Program. Okay. Um, also had a presentation from the Manitoba Courts Division um, in regards to the either uh, municipalities going with the Municipal Bylaw Enforcement Act or through the Provincial Offenses Act um, when we're dealing with uh, bylaw infractions and things like that. So, um, there's a lot of confusion out there as to which one um, is better uh, for each individual need. So um, committee and the AMM is going to put together a working paper and probably disseminate that so that uh, it can help the CEOs and councils decide which uh, would be a better method for enforcing parking violations, bylaw violations, and things like that, and be able to have the ability to collect the offenses on that. A lot of the municipalities are getting both processes mixed up because they're two distinct processes, and um, there's a lot, still a lot of confusion on it. So, um, despite them having a um, a presentation at the MOS seminar last spring on it, um, where they thought they had clearly explained it to everybody that was there. But uh, like myself, I told them, says, a lot of people came out of that seminar more confused than anything because it's just not their world. Um, with the language and regulations and trying to explain that, if you, if you don't live and breathe that world, it, you came out just as confused as you went in. So. Uh, so they're going to try and do some education and some sending out some information to clear that up. And they're more willing to talk to uh, uh, CEOs to phone in and work through um, the process as to help decide which one would be the best to recommend to councils and set that process up. So uh, Mr. Coble, I can give you the individual's number and we can have those chats with them to Thank you. get us on there. So. Um, we also had uh, for, for an update from Department of Justice uh, on the Manitoba Police Services Act review. Um, that uh, process, the RFP for the province is closed, and we're now in the process of selecting an organization that will do the review. 
that will be done this fall uh, throughout the winter and will be uh, report will be required before the end of fiscal year. So we're moving very quickly on that. Um, and the terms of reference has already been published and whatnot. AMM is going to be a great, uh, is going to be a key um, member of the people that's going to be uh, questioned and interviewed for their recommendations along with a lot of other organizations. Um, they also gave us an update on the mental health act rollout um, where there's a pilot project or it's starting off small where Selkirk Hospital, Health Sciences Center and Brandon, Brandon Regional Health Authority um, where the RCMP will be, have the ability to hand over mental health clients that are waiting for assessment to designated care providers so that we don't have RCMP waiting for hours on end uh, regarding or, um, people that are under the Mental Health Act waiting for assessment. So hopefully that, um, we'll get that going out and then there's been a lot of interest by other communities, uh, particularly communities that have um, uh, mental health units in their local facilities as to bring them up to speed and on board with uh, the designated person um, requirements so that uh, RCMP don't have to wait there in their facilities for hours on end while we're waiting for the assessments. And then uh, we had a quick brief uh, update on the contract uh, or the contract management um, for the RCMP. Um, they will be meeting again this fall um, and I believe they said the dates can be pushed back until after the federal election because players may change as to negotiating with the next provincial and federal RCMP contract will be and what that will look like. So, um, and then on July 1st, I attended the Canada Day events at Legion Park. Um, ice cream was a big hit again this year. Uh, it was a, I think, a record amount of ice cream. Uh, handed out in a record amount of time. An hour and a half, we went through 16 pails of ice cream. So, words out that we give out free ice cream. So, but you probably ate a half a pail. Out of one. Um, and uh, hats off <coughs> to uh, Councillor Friesen and her crew for putting that all together and a fantastic job and great fireworks display. So, thank you very much for your guidance and doing that. Mm -hmm. so, Thanks. That's all Thank you. Councillor Delorier. Uh, I guess we'll just want to reiterate the fireworks were excellent last night, especially against the uh, cloudy backdrop. That looked pretty, pretty crazy cool. Um, Thanks. I also uh, had a phone call from the president of Small Valley Sport Fish Enhancement. Uh, he understands we had our discussion, came to our, our decision last evening, but he just wanted to make sure that we were aware of something. And, as far, and it's again about the tables and chairs, and I don't quite disagree with them actually. It's, we need to look at it. When they would rent the entire arena, they get all the tables and chairs, everything with it, all the toilet, everything, and they pay 800, 800 bucks roughly. This year, just to rent the tables and chairs, their bill is well over a thousand. So they would have been better off renting the whole thing, even though the Stampeders had to play there and just taking the chairs. So. Our, I, I, we need to look at that anyways, or we need to, administration needs to come back with some, or we need to just get rid of the tables and chairs, or I, I don't know what the answer is, but it, something doesn't quite right, and I agree that they're using less of our facilities and their bill is bigger this year, and our rates haven't gone up by that much. So yeah. that, that needs to be looked at again, and I don't know what the answer is, but just wanted to make everybody aware, and that's all I have to report on. Thank you, Councillor. Mr. Kroll. Uh, could everyone uh, refresh their computers to start with? I just added a couple of motions that I noticed. I'm, I'm, I'm training uh, Stephanie to do some of the background clerk work, and I just noticed a couple of motions that were missing that need to be in there. Whenever a document is received, you need to receive it through a motion. So. That's all it is, just fairly minor. So my CAO report, um, uh, I've been in discussion with Terry about some accounting software uh, going forward, either 
Diamond or Munisoft to need to look at that for the future. Not today, not tomorrow, but sometime in the future we need to look at that. Um, so I've got pricing from Munisoft and he's going to look at uh, Diamond pricing to see what direction we need to go in because it's a very expensive uh, renewal process every year uh, for the accounting software for the municipalities. If you look at that. Uh, uh, Terry's in the middle of uh, doing some training with the clerks and he's doing very well. He's, uh, um, I think there's a uh, a lot, a lot more camaraderie and a lot more uh, uh, spirits are a little bit higher around the office uh, now that uh, now that uh, everybody's sort of engaging and, uh, and working together on things. Um, I discussed the ex expectations from the province about our budget and and our hope to begin in October of this year. Wendy Wolf, our representative with the province uh, called me to ask a couple of questions about items that are on the agenda for later, a couple of bylaws that we need to get passed uh, because they uh, were sort of out of sync with how the province needs it done. So that's why these bylaws need to be passed tonight. Um, she thought that was a good idea, just to let you know that uh, uh, she thought it would be a good idea to, uh, to start early on that, perhaps October. <coughs> I did the uh, municipal health check up through the AMM, um, which is a, a fairly lengthy document that I went through, uh, and it's a survey of your town. So I had to call a uh, superintendent of schools as well as a couple other people around town to get some numbers from them on school enrollment, where it's going up or down, is it flat, these type of things, to get a score on our municipality. So, uh, according to the AMM score, we're, we're at 60%, um, which means that the town is is doing okay. It's not doing great, but it's doing okay. Uh, we have to get some more information to find out whether um, what trajectory we're on right now as far as the town goes, uh, because, our, because uh, we don't really get accurate numbers until every four or five years, right? So... Um, I'm um, working on that. It's, it's all sort of background information to be able to uh, uh, look at where we need to go with economic development and things like that. Um, so it, it, that's what it answers anyway. Um, but as I've said, I, I'm working with the Public Works on the cemetery issues and where there'll be an upcoming report to Council. <laughs> Continue to work with Derek on uh, legacy issues that uh, uh, have been going on in the background that uh, we're working on. Uh, I reviewed the procurement policy uh, folder as well as the proposed procurement policy. Um, the proposed procurement policy, uh, which is a bit of a clone from from another uh, another city in Manitoba, I think it's I think it's a pretty good document. I changed one or two of the numbers just to come into line with uh, the new West partnership that we have to follow. But I mean, other than that, it's a pretty good, a pretty good document. So um, I, I, that'll be probably a policy proposal coming up in the next couple of council meetings to try to get that put forward. I believe that's one through first reading as a bylaw. Yeah, it's to be a bylaw. Right, yes, yeah. Uh, we, when I say policy proposal, it just means general bylaw or policy, it's uh, okay. something I'm putting forward. Um, the uh, committee of the whole meeting date, uh, we need to we need to set a meeting date. I had initially set the, the 9th, uh, but I put it on the agenda there uh, because there was a request to uh, discuss and look at options for, for a meeting date. So. Well, I can't be there tonight, but uh, I mean, I can be there October, but I would massively prefer if we did it on the 23rd. But I'll do whatever, I'll do whatever I have to do. I, I, I would agree with you uh, on the 23rd in the sense that I think for the first committee of the whole meeting, I think everybody should be there so we all sort of get our sea legs together on how it's supposed to work and play out. Uh, it, it won't have a great effect. Uh, Summer, many councils actually opt for one council meeting in the summer per month. So, uh, you know, two plus the committee of the whole is uh, 
is covering the municipality pretty well, I think. So. Third one for me. Consensus on the, amongst the rest of the members for the 23rd. Instead, instead of the ninth? Instead? Instead of the ninth to accommodate everyone. Mm -hmm. that, that's a Tuesday, the 23rd? Yes, sir. Uh, time? Uh, I would like it as early as possible. The committee of the whole is quite a bit different than, than a council meeting. Council meetings generally run between an hour and two hours. Um, committee of the whole can be three, possibly four hours. You can start whatever time you want. Uh, we can't start before six. Yeah. And, six fold, six and that ten. was our early time, I think, for starting. If everyone's good with that. Six is okay with the, the rest of council. Six fifteen work better. Six fifteen. I can Six get eight. myself down. As long as John can bring me some. Dip. Yeah, bring me some food. You know. That's a good point. Are we eating before we come right here? <laughs> oh. No. Sorry, that wasn't funny. Can bring in some donuts. <laughs> what are we doing? We'll bring our own food. We'll do whatever we're going to do to eat. But as long as we know. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. I think yeah. the idea. Of, yeah. I don't want to stop. And give up my car to get you. Know, buy lunches, <clears throat> breakfast. Mr. Crow, go ahead. Uh, the second meeting, uh, the vision, mission, and values meeting. Um, we're probably looking at three to four hours. Uh, be a one-off meeting uh, to be able to set those. Once once vision, mission, and values are set, uh, a lot can be done from there. Uh, have a different view on the process, but we can have a meeting on it. Values, vision, and mission. Is that something that you would like to see after the 23rd or prior to the 23rd? I, it's, it's really up to you. I, I, uh, I find that uh, sometimes when you start loading up your agenda, then you, the focus starts going away from what you're actually trying to do, right? So, um, all I really want is to have it on the agenda for you guys so that we can set a date July. soon. Right? So how about the 30th of July? 30th? Yeah, I, I mean, it works for me as long as, like I said, we take the discussion of the strategic plan because I, I have a very defined view about that. Works. And what is that meeting called? And the title? 615 again? Yeah. Okay. Sure. Soon as we should. What's it called? Mission, mission and values. It's a start strategic planning process. Mr. Kroll, continue, please. Sorry. <clears throat> Asset management is to begin uh, in July uh, or slash August when the uh, road crew comes in. I'm going to take out a couple of the public works guys while that's going on and start looking at some roads and the uh, issues to do with the roads and, and how to fill out the form to be able to grade the roads. Uh, it's effectively the first steps in doing asset management. We need to take an account of what we own and what kind of ship it's in. So, um, yeah, and the uh, the office staff are working hard and uh, doing a great job. And uh, That's it. Thank you very much. Uh, I guess my report now, <clears throat> congratulations. Councillor Friesen and your, and your team on Canada Day. I apologize that I was not available for ice cream. I had some other commitments as well as some catering that day. So I do apologize that I wasn't there to assist. But um, from what I heard, it was amazing and you did a very good job. The fireworks display was also very well received. I would like to propose that um, just by the view of the public to see the amount of public that was there viewing the fireworks and the um, events down at the park that we perhaps focus a little more um, funds perhaps or funds and the community wants to be there and we should be engaging in the items that the community really wants to be a part of and I feel that we should look at that but that'll be at uh, another, another meeting. Uh, a committee of the whole meeting. I'm very grateful that we put that motion forward and, and we all will be meeting as a whole. I'm very excited to see what that's going to bring. Um, the budget hearing was also very interesting. My first budget hearing, public budget hearing that I was a part of, um, I guess in the past, I never did attend them. 
um, but it was um, it was interesting, and I am a little bit disappointed that we only had one member of public um, join us. So um, hopefully next time we have more. Um, Airport Commission, and we will, are working with that. We will discuss some items at our committee of, as a whole um, on how we are moving forward with that and, and what preparation steps ahead of time that committee can be prepared for in the event going back to the other municipalities. Um, RISE will be, RISE economic development will be interesting and it's interesting that we hear and we read um, in almost every newspaper lately the importance of economic development and I'm not sure if that's just because I'm looking for it harder or if it is actually showing up in every newspaper, every magazine that I'm reading. Um, random people discussing the importance of economic development. So I stress that um, hopefully there are people watching it and discuss it with their outside municipalities and, and tell them the importance of economic development to the community as a whole. Um, uh, just in regards to OSS and recycling, um, I think that that program is, is running out. I, I know that we need to look at that moving forward. Um, however, in terms of what businesses or individuals need to do with that recycling, I think that the rates, if the individual business person is to contact OSS, the rates are much different than what the business would be paying to the town. Um, for that service. So when we say that a, a business should contact OSS directly, I guess in my mind I would be fine if I looked after OSS entirely, but we can't, I don't know, in my opinion, I don't think that we should be having those businesses double double pay to the town and to the, and to the provider. Either the town is looking after it as a whole or they're not. It, it, I don't think that we can have it both ways. So that's something that we'll discuss at a at, at a future future meeting. Um, and um, I have another note, but I can't read it. That's what happens when I write write too fast. <laughs> um, I think that's all I have, Councillor Fritz. I'm sorry, I forgot. Um, Communities and Bloom judges are coming again the 29th of July. So I'd like to book the van that day. Um, and next year, Manitoba is 150 years old, so it's a perfect excuse to make fireworks even better next July 1st. Maybe some grand fireworks or whatever. And also, um, we need to make a note to not forget to apply for the grant on time this coming year. No, it was totally my fault. I, it's usually later on in the year and it, it was some ridiculous October or something. Um, yeah, that was the only two things. Okay. I do, I, I can read it now just in regards to um, one more item on my list. Um, grass cutting, I'm glad to see that that more is, is um, repaired just in regards to cleaning up intersections that the mower cannot get. I'm hoping that you talk to your green team about that and, and have the ability to trim around maybe some of the signs as we're coming in and the intersections at Highway 10 coming into Swan River, perhaps exiting, but Highway 10 for sure. Okay. And, and, and the reason I say that is that, that uh, now we'll, just, we'll talk about that at, a, at another meeting. That's all I have for my report. Um, at this point, I would like to excuse myself from the chair for 7.31. Councillor Deloria will take my place. I, have, I would like to discuss on that one. Councillor Deloria. Okay, item 7.3.1, uh, the clinic expansion process. Um, we all have the information in front of us, a uh, bit of a report. Um, is there any discussion on the report? First, where did this report go? 
Uh, Counselor would call me first to get his hand up. All right, um, look at my screen there as, as well, sorry. Uh, so this report came from the, uh, uh, the clinic in one of the meetings that was held. It's in regards to two items on there. <clears throat> one being closing off the back alley for access to increased parking and then for a right of first refusal on um, the property behind that one. Um, so I guess I will discuss that. The It was brought to the attention that um, another member of, that, of our council was supposed to bring this forward. <clears throat> that didn't happen, so I'm bringing it forward. The idea, and I think Mr. Poole and I had the discussion, was that um, they want to close off uh, the street coming onto Main Street and have more parking for the patients that are coming into there. We talked about the process and, and fees, Mr. Poole, and I think that that'll be sent out if it hasn't been sent out to the clinic already in terms of what that will look like. We'll start on that one and then we'll get to the other one. So Mr. Poole, if you wanna talk about that. Yeah, I guess I was just approached on the process of how to take a, a road access out and sell it, be similar to a public reserve, except we would have to have a, I don't know if we need a road closure bylaw to close an alley? I think so. It's a road allowance. Okay, we will have to have a road closure bylaw in addition to this process, but uh, uh, as for the, you know, changing, changing those uses, and uh, the process of them, I believe the last one took two and a half years before it was finalized and registered. It, uh, it's just a very long process. It includes MLS surveyors, a lot of administration hours, but that's the reason for the fee. But uh, basically this is, the, this is just the simple process of outside of uh, doing a road closure by a lot of selling town property. That's either public reserve, low allowance, et cetera. <clears throat> and of course, further to that, Mr. Poole, if you can help us out, is that the only option that they have for wanting to close the back alley? Are there any other options that the clinic may have for creating more parking in that in that space? Uh, I guess outside of having a first grade refusal on that property expanding that but uh, I don't I don't see any I don't see any outside of going up okay so, so, so can I still finish on yeah. that one so then before then this is the process we'll send them the information they can decide if that is something that they want to move forward with in terms of spending the money and having that happen in a, in a longer time frame correct okay. Did Councilor Moore? Um, yeah, uh, Councilor Tony answered the question, but a follow up question is that um, I was under the understanding after um, at the Medical Services Committee meeting is that one of the physicians was supposed to come to Council as a delegation to pitch the idea. Because um, I would hate them to see uh, dish out $4,000 to begin the process when it's even a non starter at the Council level. Or, or what the options are and stuff like that. So. Councilor Gray. Uh, my understanding is correct. They want to close the, the alley between the Nelson and the building to add parking. That's what both, that's the reason why we, they were supposed to come here and give a delegation as- Because to, that's going to add like two parking spots. That's why I don't sure. Tony? I guess that was, yes, it was the, um, uh, Dr. Lee Coding that was supposed to come and have that delegation. I guess that's why I pulled myself out of it because I did have the knowledge of this. Uh, Miss Lisa Lukey was as well supposed to show up. Neither one can make it to a, to this. Um, so that's why I'm speaking on that behalf. But yes, you're correct that they did want to close from um, the street to the back of their their property, that, that space. Uh, I'm not sure. you're right it's only a couple parking spots is it really worth it but that's the pro the questions that they wanted to bring to council and whether a council would would allow them to do that but ultimately i think it's up to their up to their choice to to find out if four parking spaces is worth four thousand dollars to them 
film there and that, but that's just the, the cost for doing the development. It's also the purchase and a bunch of other costs. Any other discussions on other port councilman Tony? The other item on there was the right of first refusal, and that was on the property directly north um, of of the clinic, and it was requested by the clinic to um, have the town of Swan River just have a right of re first refusal in the event that that property would ever go to sale, that somebody within the community would have um, just the knowledge of it being wanting to go to sale. Councilor Gray? Uh, okay, I'm totally confused about that one. Uh, the first one confused me because they don't want to have a business plan, but, but this one confuses me because it's not our property that's being adjoined. If the owner can certainly go and up to negotiate a right of first refusal, the clinic can go and negotiate a right of first refusal. Presumably they have to pay for that. The process is you pay for that to be an annual fee to keep the right of first refusal to the owner. But that's how would the, why would the town become involved with that? I'm, I'm confused. Councilor Tony? Um, I guess I can talk on that. I guess their reason for that was that it would take an awful long process to get the regional health authority on board with that if the concerns were uh, that they just wanted somebody to be able to have the knowledge of the property, have a, a thumb on the property, I guess. Not saying that we were going to purchase it or anything, but uh, just a right of first refusal on purchase. Or right. Right. Councilor Morio, right. um, I think they some of the physicians or members at the clinic are totally confused as to what the end results of the meeting was. Um, as Councilor Gray says, from my understanding of meetings, the town was never going to be putting the right refusal. It's the owners for Prairie Mountain Health for the doctors group that were to solicit that right of first refusal from the individual that owns that property because uh, it's the town has nothing to do with it. So it's either there was supposed to be a letter going to the health foundation um, that who could be their proxy to do that right to first refusal as to a person of that property but not the town of Swander. so so i think some there's maybe too many fingers in the pie and things are getting confused as to what was agreed to and what was discussed at the meeting um, there and it, maybe it's just a lack of understanding on some of the players as what to the processes are who, who has the stuff, but uh, definitely, as Council Gary says, uh, it's, it's not the town's responsibility, but the, uh, it's more appropriate to have if they have the request to the health foundation and the foundation have, blesses that, they can have that, or they're the doctor's group or Prairie Mountain Health. It's definitely not the town. And just in that regard, I was sitting in on that committee. I do not sit on that committee, but that was the information that was uh, that I understood and that was asked to portray to council. So that just to that to be known that it's not my committee. I, I'm not involved in that. I was just bringing that forward uh, as a, as doing a favor to that. His Worship Mayor Jacobson was to attend a health foundation. health foundation meeting shortly thereafter. That was to be discussed, but we're not privy to that. What happened at that meeting, what was discussed, we haven't got the minutes from the last meeting either to corroborate what we're thinking we heard, which I believe is accurate. So I think it's imperative that we ask uh, His Worship Mr. Jacobs to get us up to date on what was decided. Regardless, I don't think it's our job, it's their job. Right, because the physicians were to make a presentation to the health foundation a couple of days after our death. So. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. The first is that it, it, I sit here often and complain that we don't do a very good job of planning, and, and then as a result, we make all kinds of ad hoc decisions. This is this is not us. This is another group, but this is a classic example of. Uh, ad hoc decision making of, of without a, a significant plan of what you're going to do and why you're going to do it. So this is almost a, a textbook uh, uh, case study of, of lack of planning. 
But the other thing I wanted was, I'd just like a comment from administration if there was anything they saw about this. Because I, like I said, I think there are significant problems with us doing it at all or being in any way involved. The only thing that they, I could think they would want would be some kind of assurance from us, which is difficult to give, that they would there would be a chance for a zoning because the immediately behind property is, is likely to be R1, if I recall. And so there's a big change in the zoning that may be a problem. The problem is I don't think we have the authority to change the zoning without an application. I don't think they have the ability to make an application to legal property. So I don't think, uh, maybe we do. I, I don't know, maybe there's some process I'm unaware of in the municipal act that allows us to um, speculatively change um, um, zoning in advance. I, I'm not aware of it, there is. So, but anyway, it just depends on the whole process. If you so, uh, yeah, so I read the report over and uh, I found it to, uh, be pretty much in line with uh, with what many of the councillors are saying. They've asked for a couple of things, uh, but as you can see, I've written the motion to receive the clinic expansion report for information rather than having any action come out of it. Take that information and find out what really is going on behind the scenes. Uh, really, what what the report are. did you read? Pardon me? You said you read the report. The one that's on the agenda. Was the report on the agenda? But we have nobody's heard anything from the foundation itself. So. No. Okay, I wanted to make sure of that. But but there's a, the, there's clearly a motion uh, written there that uh, would allow you to accept the report for information um, with no action. So, Mr. Poole. I guess I just wanted to say that this answers the questions that were just posed to me of how do we get that public reserve or sorry back alley in you know and be able to sell it and this is just simply the process to that answer right and then also for the first very refusal but uh, just off the top of my head there's 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 processes in here that require ministerial approval and one of those is that before we we get that approval there's a public hearing. So we will have a, a pretty sizable commercial business that has their, their dumpsters and they have, they operate their kitchen exit there. So they should be approached and then a, a pretty big apartment complex down that back alley. I don't know if it will affect them very much, but if we were to go with this, once a plan is established, it would be a good idea to contact those people and just see, instead of them getting a letter in the mail for them to object wholly against it. We got a, to effectively a 900 foot circle around the property that will have to be notified. So, join? And I guess that was the uh, the intention of, of them was to, <clears throat> what is the process of that even happening? Um, so I, I, I think that that, I, I don't think that we need to make any decisions. I, I totally agree that it was just to give them the information to see if that's even possible and, and what that looks like. I don't think that that's an outrageous expectation for somebody to ask for. Um, and in, in terms of, of the right of first refusal, I think that, yeah, there's definitely other questions that need to be answered there. But in terms of the first part, I think that we're doing our job as council to say, you want to do that? We don't care how many parking spots it's going to get, but this is the process that has to happen. These are the fees. If you want to do it, we'll attempt to do it for you. That's, I, I don't think that's an outrageous question to ask. The fees are, are the fees, they're not the cost, they're not the transfer cost or anything like that at the end. No, actually we will we will refund what they don't use. We just had we've had them that high before. Yeah. Councilor White. Uh, with the blessings of council, I think good council more and I sitting on the medical service team probably get together sooner than later with uh, Lisa and some of her team go over this information with them. I, I'm assuming this isn't private information the process it's part and of, uh, we'll talk about it with you fine it's part of the public agenda so that's public information okay so i'll move the resolution is provided i'm just wondering why we wouldn't let the administration deal with them on that and even better that's my view right, is that the, those kind of discussions should be with the administration unless there's a reason for for council members to deal with it I agree with that 100%. I think that the information, the request is put forward. Administration needs to look after getting that information to them. If they want to pursue it, they pursue it. I don't think that there's any further discussion by council members. Can I get a motion to uh, receive the clinic expansion report for information? Oh, you moved it? Okay, can I get a seconder? Okay, uh, any other further discussion? If not, all in favor? 
Moved. Second. Any opposed? Carried. I will show. Turn the chair back over to Thank you, Mayor. Now you're on the hot seat. <laughs> Thank you, Councilor. <laughs> <Yeah, literally. laughs> <clears throat> All right, moving on to 7.4, 7.4.1, uh, motion to receive the Swan Lake Watershed District Board meeting minutes from the June 20th, 2019. If I could have a mover on that one, please. Moved by Councilor Gray, second by Councilor Delorier. Uh, further discussion? Um, Councilor Delorier. Or, sorry, Gray. Apparently, we're still members and they're not taking this out. Um, secondly, have we had any response to our letter, either from the Swan Lake Watershed District or from the minister say, suggesting that the action of setting the fees, and they haven't even set the fees yet, but they can't now until after September the 10th, but the, the act, that firstly, they've been improperly collecting fees because they've done it wrongly. And secondly, that the process of, of, of arbitrarily setting fees on some 2012 values is just philosophically wrong and probably illegal in my view. Um, so, uh, and was it in fact in the Department of Justice's view initially until somebody passed and massaged that opinion apparently. So, um, we've received no response. No. <clears throat> um, I'm not sure if we need to do a follow up um, with anyone because I don't know that the Minister of Justice or anybody else can respond to it effectively right now. We're in blackout until they can't do anything about it. Uh, and as long as we're not being impaired in our process at the Swan Lake Watershed. Nothing. Then I've moved acceptance of that. So Mario, um, <clears throat> in their minutes under uh, section five, I uh, assume that's their board chair report. Does anybody know what the new Swan Lake Watershed District proposal is done? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the proposal that we voted against. Okay. Yeah. So I'm white. <clears throat> I would have also, of the assumption that even regardless of the blackout of the government, business of the day still goes forward. It can't stop just because this this would be business of the day. Would they not still be able to deal with it? I, well, I don't know. I, I'm, not, I'm not like strangely enough, this government hasn't asked my opinion on it. But, <laughs> but but if they did ask my opinion, I think um, that there are things that you can go ahead with, like prosecutions or or ongoing contracts or whatever. This is a specific process for the determination of, uh, by order and council of what the fees will be for the Swan Lake Watershed District. That will require a public announcement. I think that's prohibited by, by the voluntary piece at this point and the public piece in a few days until after the election period, in my view. Okay. But, uh, I mean, the minister will, just, will govern himself how he chooses. But if I, if I was giving you advice, I would say you can't touch that with a 10 foot pole until after the election. That's what I would say. And, and I think there's the added idea that it's always nice to have the minister's right name on the letter when you send it, if it happens to be a different minister after an election. Yeah. So if we send further follow up letter, we, yeah. Yeah, we don't want to send it the same to the wrong minister. Do we, we get the wrong minister? We have to make sure. No, I just meant oh, it after an election. Oh, like, yes. person. Uh, yeah. Suddenly there's there's not much onus to do it. It's, yeah. So anyway, I, yeah, that's my view anyway. I, I don't care. It's too much anyway. Yeah. Any further discussion? All in favor? Motion's carried. Moving on to new business 8.1, Recreation um, Committee minutes. Resolved that the June 11th, 2019 Recreation Committee meeting minutes be received. Moved by Councillor Gray, second by Councillor Friesen. Further discussion? Does anybody want to discuss anything about it? Councillor Morio. Um, how are we doing on the temporary floor at the arena? I see the, it says arrived on site yesterday, but I don't know when yesterday was. Uh, June 12th, or June 10th, June 11th is one. Okay, yeah, I see that. So, how are they doing? Are they? I believe they're still on schedule for a, is it July 22nd? Yeah, something like that. July 22nd finish. Uh, I know there is, we've had a bit of a hiccup with the boards and raising them, but uh, Patty has some progress. I 
then are we going ahead with the directional, like the thawing of the permafrost or? Not at this point. We are simply replacing the floor. Okay. And yeah. the surface. We're not doing the other piece with the cross current. Geothermal, we're getting yeah. quotes, ice quotes. Yes, yes. Right. because we told you small quotes. That's what I thought. <laughs> Councilor Delorean. Um, the hiccup with the board you referenced is that the advertising? That yeah. So we figured out what, what's going to, if we're going to raise them up or? We are going to raise them up, yeah. Our own forces or? Yep. I, Between public works and rec, we're going to get our work done. But councilor, right? I'm I'm one of the people who's on the board. Yeah. Not me personally, but <laughs> um, as is um, the deputy mayor. And, and quite candidly, you said, look, you're going to have to pay fifty bucks because we have to adjust the things. Um, I I would pay that. I, I, it just seems to me that's the cost of doing business. And I, I, again, I'm not sure. I know there'll be people unhappy who will have to pay the 50 bucks or whatever it is, but it just seems to me or 100 bucks. I mean, it's a thousand bucks, you might get a bit of a fight from it. But um, philosophically, uh, when we get to our meeting, whatever we call it, um, philosophically, I'm of the view that, particularly for businesses, you just it's the cost of doing business. This is the cost. You want the service? Pay for it. I, I personally would just send out a letter to everybody and say, Here's the cost. Anybody, if you object, let me know. We'll be pleased to take your sign down. Councilor White. Just a couple of questions about to the lawsuit. Uh, the outstanding balance has been received by from NATAR. Which one is Pardon? By, by NATAR. By NATAR. That was the $110,000 contract to redo the relinings. Okay. And you recall we didn't pay $10,000 because we said they didn't do a very good job on the hot tub. And so then they sued us, but they also, we'd gone two and a half years, and so it was actually doubled because they had an exorbitant interest rate. They ate the interest, and we paid them the original sum, and it's done. Okay. We probably had a, pro a decent claim to say you didn't do a good job and we shouldn't have to pay you, but we didn't prosecute it at the time, and so we, we put ourselves in a very tenuous position. So this was better than the solution of going through a lawsuit, especially for $20,000. The settlement talks to begin. Is there a timeline of, of what those things take to do? Yes and no. Um, the we now have the pleadings closed. So what that means is everybody's claim, cross claim, counter claim, defense is all in. So it's closed. So there's not, not going to be any more unless there's a motion to amend. Everything's up. So we we have that whole big book of, of projected costs. There's the background and then there's projected costs. Brian has sent to all, our lawyer has sent to all of the other side, all of our projected costs, along with presumably along with a letter that says, here's why we think there's liability for all of this stuff. And these are things we accept that we're not going to get. Presumably, I don't know, that's his job. And so his, the next step after that is to say to people, okay, everybody who's a defendant and the other, your share because there was a bunch of mistakes here. This isn't one person's mistake. This is a series of mistakes. Let's figure out how we can resolve this without going to court. The normal process is that will take somewhere between two and four, five months, unless there's productive discussions. If you get, nobody says, okay, we're at four months. We, you know, we're almost to settlement, but since we haven't got a settlement, now we're moving to the next stage. If there's progress, it'll keep going. But if there's no progress by early fall, October, I think that we will then move to, to do the discovery of documents, tell everybody else they have to do theirs, which normally take a month or two, three, and then we'll move to discoveries. Now, in Manitoba, not unlike many provinces in the common law jurisdictions of Canada, um, lawsuits are notoriously slow for a bunch of reasons. Um, the first is that, with the greatest respect to my own profession, um, some lawyers are incredibly slow. Me too, sometimes. And it's just it's just nature of the beast. Secondly, when you're scheduling this many people, it's going to be problematic. More importantly, the average lawsuit in Manitoba now is taking about seven or eight years in the civil process, which of course brings the administration just into, into disrepute. But we have child welfare legislation, um, the, the Supreme Court just dealt with criminal matters, uh, and there are some other family matters where. Um, the courts, the Supreme Court has said you can't take 
indefinite amounts of time or the legislature said that. And so those have to come to the forefront. So resources that were previously being used for civil matters are now being used for criminal matters, or child welfare matters, and it means that civil claims get de delayed, which is why in most agreements, and if we go to further agreements, including, I know we missed it on the, on the one I, just before I was elected, but we should put in arbitration clauses so that we're not caught ever in having to sue people. So that where there's a, a dispute, we can get in front of somebody quickly and just get a decision. Because quite candidly, from our perspective, it would be better to put this just in front of anybody and just get a decision. Even if the decision was, no, you guys don't get anything, then we're better off. We at least know what we're doing. Okay, thank Goodbye. you. And uh, one other, just brief comment, I think it's easy to solve uh, relative to the Stampeders Agreement. Uh, and sure, there were the changes to capacity and liquor permit extensions. I'm all in favor of everything to go, but there has to be some mechanism in there to protect uh, the clientele when that Zamboli backs in and out. Yeah, and right well, now... Hmm? You're not allowed to go there anymore. Right. Zamboli? No, the people. The people. Well, you're asking. No, that, that'll be a mechanism. Exactly. That's a mechanism. Perfect. Thank you. Yeah. And, and the, the last comment, every user is going to be told that. This is the actual cost. This is what we would charge you. And we're giving you this. This is a, a, a this is a, a gift to you, for lack of a better word, of this amount of money. Just so you know how much it costs us to operate this. No more this people coming and saying to us how much how we're over like we're gouging them for the cost because you can get the cost on some open air ice for less. Any further discussion? <clears throat> All those in favor? It is carried. 8.2 Prairie Helicopter Request Letter. We'll see, see a request there from the Swan Valley Egg Society in terms of having a helicopter provide rides for people during um, the Northwest Roundup and Exhibition. I'm not sure. What's the Northeast space? The only North and Northwest. I think they're using your church. Anyway, whatever space there is. It should have been northwest. Yes, it's northwest, not northeast. Northeast would be the highway. Yeah. One. Northeast, yeah. Or, or John's church. Sorry, I recorded that. That was not mine. Okay. Isn't that your church? I thought that was your church. <laughs> Sorry, I apologize. It's okay. But you had the other one. Yes. <laughs> My fault. So, with that amendment, I'll move acceptance of that. I think it's obvious. Councilor Mario? Um, it doesn't say in this request, but did he say what their hours of operations and when they're going to be potentially flying this thing? I, don't, I personally don't care. I mean, I'm assuming they're going to do it. I, 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 they, they do it during daylight hours. Yeah, no, I just would hate to see them like starting at 8 o'clock in the morning and then we have a bunch of irate residents there that we have a helicopter landing and taking off at 8 o'clock in the morning. Okay. Or I, I'm. I'm I'm amenable to an amendment to provide an early a 10 a.m. start time or whatever you want. And same thing for an evening shutdown time. 8 p.m. 10 and 10? 10 to rodeo weekend. 10 and 10 hours. 10 a.m. and 10 p.m. Yeah. If it's I, less than that, but at least they work in that thing. So I, I'm amenable to that. Because so. I think it's obvious. I don't even think it's a close call. Mr. Kroll is updating the uh, resolution there. It's a very long resolution, but I tried to cover all the bases, so it's fine. Okay, I will get to that resolution. <laughs> Resolved that Prairie Helicopters Incorporated be given permission to use the green space north and northwest of the... Sorry, did we change that to west or east on the resolution, or did mine just not load? It's north and... Northwest. Northwest. Oh, I put southeast. <laughs> no, exactly the opposite. Southeast. southeast would be on the, well, that would, would be, be on the street now. Or <laughs> so, I'm still, <laughs> still working no, this out here. It's all good. Uh, northeast. Northwest. 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 I think. If you could just refresh, I think it, it should be set for you now. 
All right. Resolve that Prairie Helicopters Incorporated be given permission to use the green space north and northwest of the Richardson Wellness Center for launching and landing during the 2019 Northwest Roundup event and that Prairie Helicopter staff must file an emergency plan with the town that is to the satisfaction of the Swan River Fire Chief. Further, that the emergency plan be filed at least one week prior to the start of the event and must include provision for inclement weather, location and operation, proof of insurance, as well as detailed emergency plan. And further, that operations be restricted to 10 a.m. and 10 p.m. during the during the event. The motion made by... Can I, can I just make one for... Uh, rather than the fire chief, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to suggest we use this for the chief administrative officer or his designate. You can designate that person. I don't care, but I, I don't think we should be directing anything to. Okay. I'll, I'll change that right away. That's why. Councillor Delorey. One, one more item of discussion in their letter. They reference using the wellness center parking lot. Rodeo weekend is one of the busiest. Week, it's a, I believe it's a busy weekend at the pool. That yeah, was at the two swings. Are we going to can we park on the grass <clears throat> rather than on the? I discussed that with Patty earlier today, uh, and we had uh, discussed either uh, cordoning off part of the parking lot or using the driveway on the other side of the houses, oh, away, yeah. going in there and then having parking on either side of the driveway further in, so it still leaves space open for the helicopter and a few cars can park in there. And, and they could also use the high school. They should talk to the high school because that was just as close to walking the other way. Oh, the direction themselves. Yeah. That would that would yeah. be, I think it'd be much better to use the the high school because it's the same distance walking either way, and then they won't have any because you if they get they can get some. <clears throat> and that's why I didn't reference the parking lot yeah. in the resolution. Okay. So, but, but that's what I would tell them to use. But I I personally don't care. I'm not going to be a pool. I'm not taking helicopters. <laughs> oh, come on. I want to go for a whirly bird ride. I've been for whirly bird rides. I haven't wanted more. Okay, let's try this again. There we go. All right. I'll read it once more. Resolve the Prairie Helicopters Incorporated be given permission to use the green space north and northwest of the Richardson Wellness Center for launching and landing during the 2019 Northwest Roundup event and that Prairie Helicopter staff must file an emergency plan with the town that is to satisfy the Swan River CAO or his designate. Further, that the emergency plan be filed at least one week prior to the start of the event and must include provision for inclement weather, location and operation, proof of insurance, as well as detailed emergency plan. And further, that operations be restricted to 10 a.m. and 10 p.m. during the event. Moved by Councillor Gray, second by Councillor Friesen. Further discussion? All those in favor? It's carried. Moving on to 8.3. Three, um, in, in regards to turnout gear, you'll see that there are three quotations provided um, for turnout gear and a resolution that in the states resolved that four, that four set of firefighters turnout gear be purchased from Rocky Mountain Phoenix at the cost of $12,723.80. Moved by? Uh, I'm prepared to move, but I do have a couple of comments. Moved by Councillor Gray, second by Councillor Morio. Discussion, Councillor Gray. I have two points. Firstly, um, well, three points. I'll tell you the number one, I'm done with points. Um, firstly, the process in the, in the not yet passed, but uh, intended to be implemented, uh, procurement policy says that there's a process for determining the quality and so on and, and that doesn't it doesn't look like it was done here it may be that all the turnout gears are identical and so there's no issue but that's sort of a fundamental process um, secondly just a comment at some point when we get through the procurement process this will not come as presumably to council there will be a, this will be something that you'll deal with the third is that um, this is a budgetary item the only issue for me 
is that there's $1,786 or whatever it is that's going to come from reallocated services. What I would hope that means is that that the fire uh, budget is going to not be over budget by $1,786. It's going to be on budget and they'll reallocate. There's some numbers are already reallocated within uh, budget. I discussed it with Terry and he's satisfied that he can pull the 17 out of their uh, budget. Those were my only three comments. Further discussion? <laughs> All those in favor? Motion's carried. Uh, moving on to um, accounts. <clears throat> be it resolved that accounts as follows be hereby approved for payment. General account check numbers 24523 to number 24611 for a total of $238,275.17. Excluding check check number two four five three four to two four five four eight that did not print due to technical issues. Payroll uh, uh, payroll account checks number four four eight zero to number four four eight five for the total of one hundred nineteen thousand four hundred ten dollars and twenty seven cents. Moved by Councillor Morio, second by Councillor Friesen. Discussion. Councillor Morio. Um, Mr. Poole on check number 24588. Um, what's a fire pit roof for Blandville? Oh, that is the, we are going to be burning cardboard. So we had to uh, purchase some things to cover the burning pit. Further discussion, um, questions, Councillor White. Councillor White. Question. It's like you said, I'm ready to go. Okay, oh, sorry, Councillor Gray. I thought a question. Just is this finally the first time we haven't seen meals public purchased for? Where the, did you finally have that discussion? We actually have a a, a monthly set of checks without without meals. Is this what I'm seeing? Yep. I am fantastically happy. Further discussion? All in favor? It's carried. <clears throat> Moving on, 10.2, resolve that the financial statements for the five months ended May 31st, 2019, be adopted as received and moved by Councillor Morio, second by Councillor White, further discussion? Councillor Morio. Um, on review of the financial statements today, I was looking through them. There's, there's some projects that looks like we have appeared to have um, completed already and stuff like that. And then there's been some balances left over. Um, are we keeping track of those uh, balances to put in the, like a, a fund where we can reallocate them somewhere to like either last year's deficit or something like that and not just get automatically absorbed into overruns in other projects? So. I don't think we can uh, allocate to previous year's deficits. We can pay on it, but we can't change last year's deficit. It is what it is. Yeah, that's what I mean, like pay on it. Like, um, yeah. But like, I just don't want to say if there's $300 left over on the project, that all of a sudden that $300 miraculously just get sucked up on another project because we still have money in that budget line like we should be trying to, like if we need to it needs to be but it's like if terry can take that money and earmark it and like if oh, we, clarify that yeah because like if sure. you budget fifteen thousand for a project and that project's done and there's a thousand dollars left over in that project that thousand dollars shouldn't automatically become available to something else without no it shouldn't but the, the budget is mm -hmm. supposed to be the budget so yeah. And uh, I intend on enforcing that as much as possible. Mm -hmm. so. The intent, Councillor Gray. The intent was exactly as Councillor Moria said. Where there's surplus that we, to the extent possible, attribute it to the two hundred ten thousand dollar deficit we had this last fiscal year. So because we're going to have to make that up next fiscal year, in the yeah. best case scenario, we, we forewent <clears throat> doing it this year because it was already a significant increase, but. Nobody, I don't think, wants to look at another two hundred thousand dollar increase in taxes to to deal with that. Yeah, I just uh, misunderstood the statement. Yeah, that's all. Yeah, we can we can pay on the previous like we, steps. Like we, we just can't restate it. It's not like in the budget, we 
they like uh, like levy certain round numbers, but it's when the actual invoice comes in, it's not the round number. There's always usually change left that Absolutely. every dollar helps in pounds. Yeah, and I want to say unless there's unless there I'm sorry unless there's something I'm missing, it looks like some of the things like it's obvious we're going to have catch up expenses and so on and carry revenues uh, are frightening at this point, but. Um, but it looks like we're not going to be over budget or anything. Is that a fair statement? Yes. Sir. And I'm in contact with Terry several times a day. It's pretty satisfied things are going on okay. smoothly right now. Further discussion? No, I just want to vote. <laughs> All in favor? It's carried. Moving on to 11, 11.1 bylaws. First reading, resolve that. Smooth. Resolve that bylaw to amend bylaw 5 slash 2019, setting the rate of taxes for 2019 be read a first time. Moved by Councillor um, Delorier, second by Friesen. Discussion, Councillor Gray. Oh, nothing. I, I thought I'd seen something, but I did. Yeah. Oh, I know what it was. Are, are we actually only extending till the 1st of September for payment? Uh, we're, we're only allowed to extend one month. Okay, yeah, that's fine. That that, that was the reason that uh, yeah, that's good. Wendy called. Councillor Mario, and I made just a kind of just a question. Since we're already into July, and normally on par, we have to July thirty first. Um, that we, by the time because it's going to take a process and time to get the uh, tax um, bills out printed and sent out to the individuals, so that will lead them. Um, maybe two weeks before the end of July to uh, pay their tax bills without penalty. Well, no, it's, it's first of September. September, you got all of August. All of August. And in fact, oh, the way no, that but that says penalties. Yeah. It, so, it says on all taxes remaining unpaid on the first day of August, there shall be added on the first day of September. Um, a month of one and a quarter percent. That's the existing bylaw. Go down below at the bottom. That was the amendment. Uh, okay. okay. Now, and in fact, the way I read it. it oh, I'm sorry, it, it is an amended law, yeah. Right. And, and, and the way I read it, as long as you came in September, we don't add the tax, we don't add no. it until the 1st of October. So you actually have till the 30th of September. That's right. Yeah. Okay, cool. Any further discussion? All those in favor? The motion's carried. Um, and we will be resolving that the bylaw to amend bylaw 5 slash 2019, setting the rate of taxes for 2019, be read a second time. Moved by Councillor Gray, second by Councillor Friesen. All further discussion? All in favor? It's carried. <coughs> uh, and I don't have, do we have anything that we want to talk about in camera? Any items? I don't have anything listed. Well, the only thing I'd like to know is what happened last time. You went into camera last time, so you went to in camera, I just like that. I was not I here. Did, did you? No. no I the minute said you suggested you did. I think, maybe I'm missing something, but I think the minute said you did. Now that you say it, no, it does say that that we went in, but we never did go in. I'll, I'll amend that. I'll just that. Okay, well, perhaps we should amend our previous motion, amend motion to yeah. say by withdrawing it. Because I read it and I thought, okay, well, I'll just raise it. And we have to go in camera to discuss it. Okay, I, I, I have nothing particularly. That well, let's watch the video and see if we did. I can't remember if we did. We're sure we didn't. It doesn't matter. Uh, I, we don't need to go in camera to discuss it. If, yeah. if if you did, if someone, or you, Mr. CAO, or you, Mr. Deputy Mayor, if someone could just let me know what was discussed so I'm not clueless, so that next time you go in camera, you say, well, we discussed that. And I go, hi, just be forgetting things again. I gotta be honest, it's not ringing any bells with me. Me neither. Um, I don't know. So I do apologize. In camera verse, sorry. It doesn't matter. Yeah. It, I, I, the only reason I wanted was to know if we did, so. 
So then we're moving on to 15, resolved that this regular meeting of council now adjourn. Moved by <laughs> Councillor White, second by Councillor Fries, and all those in favor. We now adjourn at uh, 924.